Have you tried the eclipse technique? In this video, I show you how. Hello there, Michelle Short here with Terrific Tags with Michelle. I'm here on the Autumn New channel, usually on the first and third Saturday of the month. If you haven't already, I'd love to invite you to subscribe to the channel. For my card today, I'm using the Sweet Jasmine collection, so it consists of a stamp set, the coordinating die set, and I love that there is coordinating dies for the sentiments as well. There are the press plates, which is the sentiments and also the image. Everything is the same size, so they all coordinate with each other, which is excellent. And then there's also the 3D embossing folder, really pretty. And then the simple colouring stencil set as well. I'm going to be using the stencil set and also the stamp set. So I have a panel of white cardstock here that's cut to four and a quarter inches by five and a half inches and I wanted to make it into a tag shape so I cut off one of the corners, flipped it over, used that as a guide to cut off the other corner. So that creates a tag shaped card base and um, this is the panel but I do have the card base that matches and I have shown this in a little bit more detail in another video and I will link that down in the description bar. So I'm bringing my panel here into my stamp wheel, holding that down with the sticky mat. And then I can take the floral image from the Sweet Jasmine stamp set and then I can place that over the top. I want to try and have this image so that it's kind of in the centre of the panel. I want to make sure that there is the same amount of gap on the right hand side than there is on the left hand side, on the side of those leaves. I can then bring in the top flip plate of the stamp wheel, pick up that stamp, flip that over and then I can ink up the image using obsidian pigment ink. This is a really beautiful dark crisp black ink and although it's a pigment ink it does dry pretty quickly. So just making sure to ink up that image really well with the ink. And then I can flip over that plate and for some reason I flipped it upside down <laughs> but because I've got the enamel dot at the bottom I know which way it needs to be. So I can press that down onto my panel. I can lift that off and now I can place my panel onto a sticky mat. I like to have one sticky mat in my stamp wheel and then have a separate one for ink blending. As you can see, it does stain quite a bit, but it still works perfectly fine. I'm then bringing in the Sweet Jasmine stencils and one by one, I can place that over the image and I'm holding it down with the sticky mat. So it's great that it holds not only the panel, but also the stencils as well. I am just mark masking off those areas at the side just in case I accidentally get ink where I don't want it. I'm then using the Enchanted Garden Crisp Dye Inks. These are really beautiful purple shades and I'm using those with a mini ink blending brush and adding the colour into the petals to start with. I'm focusing most of the darker colour towards the centre of the flower. Whilst purples aren't a natural colour for these flowers, I did want to create them in purple because I'm making a card for my mum and she happens to really love the colour purple. I do as well, so obviously that's really helpful because it's always nice to use the colours that you like as well. But the great thing about card making in particular is that you can customise cards to the recipient. So it happens to be a love week here at Altenew. So every person is going to be creating love cards in a slightly different theme so my theme is familial love so that's why I wanted to make a card for my mum I absolutely love my mum and she also happens to love my cards which is really nice so it's always nice to make a card for a person who really appreciates the work that's gone into it but like I say I really love to make cards for family members in particular because I can customize the card to the recipient in this case she really loves the color purple so I'm creating purple purple flowers she also absolutely loves flowers so I definitely wanted to make sure that I used flowers on her card today I'm also creating the mum sentiment with the eclipse technique so again I'm customizing the card to who I'm actually making it for 
So I've taken that first stencil and I've added in the three lightest shades of the Enchanted Garden inks. I've lifted off that stencil as you can see and now I'm placing the next one down. Some of the stencils do have kind of like two sides to them so you do kind of want to shift them over a little bit. Thankfully this one kind of shifted over enough that I didn't have to clean it in between. One of the ones later on I did kind of like wipe it a little bit and then I used a little bit of scrap paper to try and mask that off. I do like to clean my stencil sort of in between but sometimes what I'm actually creating I feel like it stops me creating if that makes sense so I don't always love to clean them in between but I definitely always clean them at the end so this is where I'm bringing in that scrap piece of paper because there were some petals on the right hand side of this stencil and I wasn't 100% sure that there wasn't any kind of residual ink underneath and I didn't want to smear that onto the panel of cardstock so now I can bring in the green Green Valley Crisp dye inks and I can add those to the leaves to colour those in and I'm using all four shades of the Green Valley Crisp dye inks. I absolutely love this collection, I really love the vibrancy of these greens and I'm going to do the same kind of thing that I did for the petals and have the darker colour towards the base of these leaves and kind of lighten them up as they go along the leaf. So I started off with the lightest shade which is Firefly, I can now bring in the grass field followed by the Shadow Creek and I do like to wipe off some of the excess ink off of my brush I think I've just got into the habit of doing that I'm not sure I definitely actually need to but sometimes I do feel that I get a slightly smoother blend by doing that so I can just finish off that last leaf here and then lift off that stencil and then for the last stenciling I'm going to colour in the centre of the flowers and for those I'm using the Golden Sunset Fresh Dye Inks, just the two lightest shades here which is Sunray and Chamomile. So again I'm trying to sort of focus most of the colour towards the centre of that flower, the same with the stamens here at the bottom. And then bringing in that chamomile which is just slightly darker and just adding a little bit, it kind of makes it look a little bit more dimensional if you have some areas a little bit darker and some areas a little bit lighter. I wanted to add the word mum onto the card like I say I really want to personalize it and I thought a good way to do that would be to use the eclipse technique so I'm taking the M and the U from the fine alphabet set and I'm going to use those letters to cut into the card panel so I'm just trying to sort of work out here where I think I want them to be placed. It is a little bit tricky because I've only got two of the letters for the dies that I can use rather than having a word where there's all different letters for example that would be a lot easier for me to be able to line up but I figured out where the centre of the panel is and I'm using that as a guide to line up my U here with a T-square ruler. Once I think it's centred I can hold that down with with tiny little pieces of low tack tape and then I can run that through my die cutting machine. I can then pop out the positive piece and then I can bring in the letter M to use for the other side and obviously I'm going to have to do this twice, one on either side. So to make sure that the M is going to be lined up I can bring in my T-square ruler and I'm also going to bring in the U die again and kind of pop that in place because the die obviously is bigger than the actual kind of cutout of the U I'm using that to be able to try and line up that M as straight as possible. I can then run that through my die cutting machine and pop out that M and then I can do the same thing for the one on the right hand side. So again run that through my die cutting machine and then I can pop that out. And then I do want to elevate these letters a little bit, add some dimension onto the card and it helps with the eclipse technique as well. So I'm taking some double sided adhesive sheet, adding that onto the back of some white cardstock and then I can die cut the letters from it. So again just holding those down with some low tack tape and then I can run those through my die cutting machine. And I have cut those multiple times so that I can stack them one on top of each other. 
So now, because they're kind of like a sticker, which is really helpful with that adhesive sheet on the back, I can then just remove that from the kind of negative and place it on top of the other letter. So I'm going to do three high of all of the letters from the white cardstock, and then there will be the stamped one on top of that. So I can just align those up and I'm just kind of placing them down very lightly to start with, just making sure that they're all going to line up well. I can then add some glue tape onto the back of my panel here, making sure to add enough of that. And I'm also going to add some liquid glue around the letters as well, make sure that everything's going to adhere down nicely. And then I decided just to add a lot of that all around the panel as well. Well, it looks like I'm adding a lot, but it isn't much at all. But it is just going to give me that wiggle room to line up this panel onto my card base. And I noticed here that it wasn't quite centered, unfortunately, and it does bother me in all honesty, but in reality, I don't think my mum is going to notice it. So I am going to leave it as is. I'm then taking the M here that is popped up and then I can pop that in place and it's just going to pop in like a puzzle piece. So I can do that again for the other M here on the right hand side. And then I can bring in the U for the center. And I did it three high, but you could definitely go a lot higher with this and make it really dimensional. Once those are in place, I can use my bone folder to really press those down. I can then add some liquid adhesive onto the back of the stamped letters and then pop those on top and that's going to complete the eclipse look. So the idea of the eclipse technique is the same as a solar eclipse. So when the moon goes in front of the sun, you can still see a little bit of the sun kind of around the outside edges. And that's what that white cardstock is doing, being popped up. You can kind of see the white around the letters, especially if you look from the side. But from the front, it is hidden. So the moon is hiding the sun. And this is the same kind of thing. The image is actually hiding hiding the sentiment. So it's a really cool technique. It's a great way to not obscure any of the image as well. So I've got a larger sentiment here with the word mum, but you don't lose any of that image. So like I say, really cool technique, one of my favourites. And I'm going to lift it up here so that you can see the white cardstock around the outside edges. It's definitely a technique that is a lot easier to see in real life than in photos. I have then stamped and heat embossed a sentiment from the Soft Blossoms stamp set. I have cut that down into a strip, added some instant dimension foam tape onto the back and then I can pop that down on top of the mum word and that's just going to complete my sentiment. So just using some tweezers and a T-square ruler just to line that up straight. I can then finish off by embellishing with the crystal clear gem sparkles. These are new at Altenew and they are just so very pretty. I love the sparkly effect on them. So I like to add my embellishments in odd numbers if possible. Ordinarily for this card, I probably would have maybe added three or five, but because it's a card for my mum and I want it to be extra special, I did go all out with the gems and add quite a few on this card in the end. So I've added a few there and just figuring out here where I want this last one to be. It did take me a massive amount of time to figure this out, whether I wanted it on top of the image or below the image, to the side of the image. In the end, I decided to pop it here on the right hand side. Once I'm happy with the placement of all of the gems, I can really press those down. And so that is the card finished for today. I love having it in a tag shape. I think it's something a little bit different. And I absolutely love that eclipse technique, like I say. And it's really nice to be able to personalise a card for my mum. Links to the products that I used will be listed in the description bar on YouTube and also over on the Autonew blog. Thank you so much for watching and I hope you have a wonderful day. Hey there, Lydia here. I really do hope that you've just enjoyed the video. If so, please subscribe to the Alternew YouTube channel 
Also turn on the notification bell so you can get your daily dose of crafty techniques and tutorials just like this. Thank you so much for watching. Bye. -bye.